Hey guys, Spartan117GW here today, and I want to talk about helmets, specifically this helmet right here. So I've been running this helmet for a while, and this is the M-Tech Flux, specifically the ballistic version. Uh, it's extremely lightweight, very well built, and honestly, the first thing you're going to notice about it is the shape, and also the way they did the rails on the helmet. So. The shape is very reminiscent of, for example, the Cry airframe. Uh, what they actually essentially did was accomplish a very similar profile without essentially the two-piece design, which is pretty ingenious. I'm not even sure how they did it. I just know that's more or less how they described it to me. Um, so what I love about it is it has really good coverage around the head. Um, it just really, really wraps around. Um, there's not a lot of helmets quite like it. Um, the closest thing maybe would be like the, the revision like Cayman or whatever, whatever that helmet is. Um, the, you know, Opscore helmets, there's a lot of great helmets on the market. Um, none of them are really bad per se, especially when you're con comparing the Airframe and the Opscore and, and Team Wendy and uh, the M-Tech, but I just personally really like the shape and profile this helmet has. Uh, it's also extremely lightweight for being a ballistic helmet and level 3A helmet. Um, and I actually got my first hands on with the carbon version and eventually upgraded to this. And then kind of funny story after like really building a relationship with the company, uh, I hit them up and then um, you know was able to help secure uh, the license for PTS. Uh, so they came on board and then of course made the airsoft helmet. So if you want something like this but you don't have like ballistic flux money, the licensed version by PTS for the MTech Flux, really great option. So, kind of going from outside to inside, I guess we'll start with the helmet cover. There's kind of a, not, I wouldn't say a super limited number of companies making helmet covers, but there's like a decent variety, not as many as Opscore for sure, but uh, this is an Agilite helmet cover. This is beautiful, it's one of my favorite helmet covers because they really take into account cable management and battery storage, which also works for counterweights and stuff too. So if you're not recording anything and you have night vision on, counterweights, absolutely fantastic right here. They basically have a pouch back here where you can basically Velcro's open, the shock cord basically is retained all the way down here and you can tighten and loosen the shock cord that kind of runs to the top of the helmet. But you can put your counterweight here. If you're running a GoPro for YouTube, you want one of those guys, put a battery in here. Plenty of space. There's even little cells on the side for CR123A batteries. Plenty of shock cord and was sewn in webbing to really route and snake those cables all the way to the front. Whether you're running an external battery pack for your night vision, whether you're running a battery pack for your GoPro, plenty of cable management options here. Now, the shape of the Velcro is kind of interesting. It's not like the most ideal for flags, so I honestly don't put a lot of patches on my helmets. I actually don't wear as many patches as I used to either. Um, but plenty of Velcro on here for strobes like the Uni Spark or a Hellstar or something like that. I personally run a Princeton Tech um, little mount right here that's just got some Velcro on it. It's actually designed for an Opscore ops but I got Velcro on it and I just use it for admin stuff. Um, but yeah, the more or less that covers the helmet covers and I think ANA Tactical makes some cool colors as well. Um, so does Spiritus to make the raid cover. Uh, if there's any colors that Agilite doesn't make, some of those are just strictly more or less covers. They don't really have a lot of cable management or pouch options. So while they are great and they provide other colors that they don't make, there's huge advantages having the Agilite ones because you have all this functionality built in. Going on to the sides in the back, we have these buddies right here. These are the Opscore amps or castles, depending on what you refer them to as if you're in the military or if you're out of the military as a responsible armed citizen. But uh, I've got the Opscore amps. These things are fantastic. I got Dynamic Fuzz, uh, basically Velcro, um, you know, little doodads on here as well to kind of dress up the uh, ear pro. But um, they ain't cheap, I'm not gonna lie. They have really good gel cups, very, very comfortable. I'll even throw it on here for you guys as well. Please excuse the terrible helmet hair. So I've got this on here right now. As you can see, one thing that guys do complain about is the Mickey Mouse ears because they're really, it's kind of binary. They're either open or closed. Um, there's really no in between, not like contacts where you can pop them out, still listen to your comms, get some air circulation, but they're not like on your head. But I'll go ahead and close these. And what I really like is that 
when these are closed, I mean, your head is just very, very well secured. Like this is nice and attached to your head, even though I don't have a dial system on here, which you can get, you can get an upgrade kit for your dial. Even though I don't have a dial system, um, very secure on the head. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Uh, as you can see, that's kind of how it looks. And you can also, I can actually uh, open these and stow them, kind of circle them to the back of the helmet if I really want, but uh, very low profile. And speaking about low profile, I want to talk about the nods real fast. So got my DTNVGs, which I got from Night Vision Inc. Really great company. They support Milsim, Airsoft. Um, there's a lot of great Night Vision companies out there, but I really like Night Vision Inc. So the DTNVGs, what I, what I really like is, as you can see, the pods, um, when they're in the up position, they can stow very, very low. Uh, DTNVS is basically the same thing, but it's got the newer metal housing. Um, so, and basically, you know, traditionally, like with PVS 15s or RNVGs or Sentinels or stuff like that, you would basically have them in like the this position, uh, and they're still kind of high and whatnot. So, if you are not really running them for a long time, a you can just take them off, or b you can stow them like this and they are significantly lower and you will immediately notice the center of gravity kind of drops down a little bit. Um, but what I also like is uh, when I bring my G24 mount down, obviously I got the bikini covers on because you know, I don't really need to have them off right now. Um, when they're down like this, you know, I could be running and gunning with the night vision like so. And then I can actually rotate the pods out if need to, if I'm like going on like a different kind of optic or whatever. Uh, or I can bring them out like this. So now the pods are out of the way. I can still see, but now they're not up here, not gonna get banged on anything, and uh, I can still see and I can still run and gun, which is really nice. So the articulation of the pods really nice. That's more or less my night vision setup. I uh, definitely recommend um, checking out the Mapbox Tercer Eclipses for those if you guys want some greater range of depth of field and adjustability. Uh, and they also more or less kind of like built-in SAC lenses, but you can also get SAC lenses from these from Night Vision Inc. for your Airsoft and Force and Force simulation UTM needs. Kind of jumping on the inside of the helmet. So we have one thing that's really, really comfortable. Okay, so I basically um, have a hybrid set up in here. So there's a couple M-Tech pads in the back, and then I've got the 4D pads here in the center. These things are super comfortable, like ridiculously comfortable. In warm contemporary weather, these things like are really, really soft. Uh, essentially like having a pillow on your helmet. And my thing is, if you're whether you're doing this for professional use or for airsoft and milsim or whatever you're doing, um, the 40 pads are second to none. They're really, in my opinion, isn't anything better. They were recommended to me by Tyler Gray, who worked on SEAL Team. He's now working in Hollywood on other projects. And uh, Chip from Unity, formerly TNVC, uh, he was uh, Chip Klasky, um, really cool guy. So he recommended them to me, and he said they were extremely soft. It's like basically like having your head in a pillow. Um, so definitely recommend that if you're looking for a helmet option. Honestly, I don't know why I wasn't running these sooner because it really takes the comfort level to a whole new level. Now, one thing to note, if you are operating in colder environment, like 30 degrees or below, these will kind of harden up when they're not on your head. But as soon as you put them on your head and your head warms the helmet up, then these will soften up again. So just one thing to note in case you're operating in colder environment. But um, yeah, this helmet setup, I'm not going to lie, this is not cheap. But the, the ballistic helmet is like, I don't know, 1800 bucks. I got to double check the price. But the helmet, when I first got it, it was probably only a couple hundred bucks. Now it's well over a thousand, maybe almost closing on $2,000. You got the ear, the ear pro here, which is like a thousand dollars themselves. Um, then you got the night vision, which <laughs> yeah, costs a lot. Um, I ended up getting high, uh, photonis tubes, uh, which are not bad. They're good tubes, uh, white phosphor photonis tubes. But if you do upgrade to L3, like unfilmed and whatnot, they're much more sensitive to light. So they'll work a lot better when there's less light. I got these because if you're playing in mixed lighting conditions, like most mouse sites are, those will be just fine. But uh, there is a visible difference between going from like photonis up to L3. I, I kind of equate it to like, going from like 2.7K resolution or really, really good 1080p to like 4K, like you will see the difference. It's like, okay, damn, these things are really clear. There's a reason why the military uses 
um, you know, filmless uh, white floss tubes. But don't forget, they're also more sensitive to light, so don't be staring at stuff. Like, you'll get temporary burn-in that will, like, go away with operational use, like, as you're using them. Like, if you look at the moon, I don't know, like a full moon or something like that, you'll notice it might leave a little mark, and then as you're walking around using them, it'll just, it'll naturally get rid of them. But uh, don't be staring at anything for too long. But uh, that's my helmet setup. It's really comfortable. Um, you know, the biggest real upgrade that I made recently was the Ear Pro, and I think one thing I'm probably going to do is replace the harness with a dial system because MTech actually offers that uh, option now. So uh, that's probably the next thing I'm going to upgrade. But yeah, that's my helmet setup. Just wanted to show you guys what I run, and then you know, for other options, I basically run the MTech Airsoft version if I want to do other colors or other setups. But um, yeah, there you go. That's my helmet setup. If you guys love gear, airsoft, cool stuff, feel free to subscribe, hit the notification button. Don't forget to hit the little bell and whatnot. And then follow me on social media. Got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everything under the sun there and I game a little bit too. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.